What's up guys? Today, finally, after so freaking long, look at that thing. Look at it. That is the sorceress. And I have pretty high expectations for it. So what's up? This is the Iron Studios Sorceress, Masters of the Universe statue. I believe this is a one-tenth scale, and it is, or I'm hoping, it promises to be an absolutely extraordinary piece because, well, it cost pennies, and uh, I waited a long time for this. Like a long time. Um, I put an order in for this a year ago, like last year, and it was supposed to come out like the first quarter of this year, and it got pushed back. Then it was supposed to come out the second quarter of this year, and it got pushed back. Then it was supposed to come out the third quarter of this year, and finally, it showed up. This is a thing when buying toys. I bought this from Big Bad Toy Store, and just so you know, if whether you're new or you're old to this, if you haven't become an online shopper, a person that buys the, the uh, pre-orders of toys, statues, busts, things of that nature, there's no actual guaranteed street date for toys. It just does not seem to work like that. Video games come out at a certain time and they will say, this is my release date. Okay. Movies have a release date. Most things of that nature, music and things of that nature will say, hey, this is when we're coming out. This is our release date. Toys give a vague idea. In the winter, in the fall, next summer, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, possibly March of 2024. You don't know. You just don't know. And it's often times that you'll pre-order something like this and it'll come either way before you expected it or so far after you wanted it that it's almost surreal by the time you get it. This is different if you're toy hunting. If you're toy hunting, it's a different experience altogether. Because just like we all know, you can hit up six targets and never once find the Chun-Li you're looking for. Am I speaking from personal experience? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. A little, little bit. Maybe a little bit. Maybe, maybe just a little bit. Um... I did, I do want, not did, I do want those Street Fighter figures and they're tough to find. And once again, this leads me to why I've been shopping online so much more than I ever have in any year past. And this, Masters of the Universe, kind of started that because I saw them, I wanted them, and just about the only way that I could guarantee to get the product and not have to search everywhere and spend the money and do the gas runs and yada yada and get them at a price that I felt was fair rather than sometimes buying them off secondary market or something like that was to pre-order the things and wait for them to come in. Hey, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. I still enjoy toy hunts, but that's the way it is. Now this thing, when I first got into Masters of the Universe, when I first got into it, I had very little knowledge little knowledge. I really loved the idea of He-Man and the designs of Skeletor, things of that nature. But I didn't really know much. I knew Beast Man. I knew Evelyn. I knew Tila. I didn't know anything about them necessarily, but I knew of them. I had a general concept of what that was and what it looked like. And that's about it. Yeah. In fact, I knew so little when I first got into it that when I very first saw the sorceress, the first time I ever saw the sorceress, 
was because I watched the Hey Yeah music video, that He-Man music video that everybody does memes on. That was the first time I ever saw the sorceress. Because towards the end of that music video, she appears in like the window and she starts singing. And the guys are like, learn how to hide your feelings. And while that's going on, she's up there going, oh, and I'm like, okay, what is happening in this ridiculous music video? And I laugh at it and I move on with my life. Then I started getting into this property. And one of the things that shocked me, like when I watched Revelation and when I started watching the original series, I love The Sorceress. Like, it's, it just strikes me. I don't know exactly what it is about it. It could be, it could be a mix of the character's design, the way that the character is portrayed, the idea behind the character, on the overall bird motif, and how it fits so well into a swords and sorcery kind of world that I enjoy, I don't know. But I absolutely feel like the sorceress design is one of, if not the best, like, sorceress design ever. I, she has to go in the top ten, if not the top five sorceress design swords and sorcery-esque characters ever. Like, just ever. I immediately fell in love with that design. And so I found myself with an extra $247. That's, I remember that amount specifically because I didn't know what I was going to spend it on. But it was all extra money. $247. I didn't know what I wanted. So I went looking. I found a Tila statue, but I was too late, and I couldn't snatch it up, and then they were starting to ask some pretty big prices for it, and so I left it behind. It started clicking around saying, you know what I do want? I want a statue. I don't know why. I was already collecting the toys and everything. I was collecting Masterverse. I was collecting Origins, and it was going fine. And I could have used all that money and just dipped in and said, bam, 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 and just bought a whole bunch of stuff. But I kept telling myself, I want one big, awesome, centerpiece, Masters of the Universe item. And I think it needs to be a statue. And I think it needs to be a good statue. And well, I went into the pre-order sections. Not on purpose, mind you. I clicked on Big Bad. I looked up statues. I looked up Masters of the Universe. And there was a whole line of pre-order stuff. And I saw her. And I instantly said, that's it. That's what I want. So I bought it. And finally, after all this time, she is here. Right here. And we're going to open this thing. And I have very high hopes. All right, here we go. This... Man, I really do. I have such high hopes for this. I just, this seems so awesome. Really, really hoping. Let's just do it. Box, pretty solid. It gives you an idea of what you've bought into. If the articulation, or rather, if the detail is anywhere near what this photograph is right here, then we've already won. We've already won. It's already an absolutely fantastic piece says 10 years of Iron Studios. I would assume that means the company's been in business for about 10 years doing absolutely fantastic work. If this is any indication, I guess I'm stepping ahead of myself because we really haven't seen her yet, have we? Sorceress, pretty simple on the side box here. Right here, we get an overview of the entire thing, what it's going to look like. And yes, from what I understand, that staircase is a part of it. She's walking down the staircase, which I believe is that giant throne that she sits on thing. And then she's walking down and spreading the wings and just looking fantastic. Worlds to collect. Cool. Masters of the Universe, I don't know if they have any kind of centralized deal with Masters of the Universe or if they do all kinds of different stuff, but there's that in case anybody wants it or needs it for whatever reason. And 
here we go. I'm looking forward to this. Let's unbox this. So I'm not too huge on the box. I really don't care if it survives or doesn't survive. I'm not going to be keeping the box, but it is, it is a good box for what it's worth. Okay. We got an Iron Studios here, right here. That's on the Styrofoam. I don't see anything else that's really stand out about that or anything, but let's... Okay. It's not often that I have to really do this, but they really wanted to make sure, and this is not a bad thing, this is a good thing, they wanted to make sure that this thing actually arrived in the, in the condition that it was supposed to arrive in. So I'm trying to be careful when I cut it and everything. I don't want to cut too deep in case like her wings are up towards the top of it in case it wasn't thick enough or something like that. I have had that happen with some of these before. And let's lift the top here. Okay. There was even this on the inside of that to guarantee Lee keep her safe to guarantee that even inside the styrofoam they were like hey just in case this is a really tough part right here hey look man if you guys want to go through this much trouble i praise you for it because this is one of those things that if you got broken you would be absolutely devastated okay looks like the stand this has real weight to it this is heavy like heavy, heavy. Okay, she's wrapped. Looks like she might be a single piece. Be pretty careful with her as we take her out of there. Okay, let me put her down. She's still in all of her wrapping and everything. Damn, this piece is heavy. I mean, it's heavy. There's the staircase right here, and it has a lot of detail. I mean, all this rock structure right here is just very, very impressive. Look at that. Look at all this individual jaggedness, and the coloring is really fine, going from different shades and everything that really pick up the light and move with it, actually. And every stair looks like it was crafted. Look at that, it's fantastic right there. And all, this, all the areas that have been broke off and everything because it's supposed to be so old. Really cool, really solid. Looks like that's where our peg is for actually putting the sorceress in. And so speaking of the sorceress, let's do it. Let's look at her. Let me get a good, let me get a good grip on her. I don't want to drop her. That would be just terrific to get her and then drop her. Okay, let's look over the sorceress, shall we? Oh, on my hand. That wasn't me coming close to dropping her. I hit her this way and it, it tilted my arm. Uh, you would have heard a very different response if that would have been me almost dropping her. Wow, look at that. Look at the face. That is fantastic, the way this comes down and everything. And this is, I mean, this is, this is on her. This isn't a separate piece, but it's, it, for what this is, look at all these individual feathers. The color separation is really sharp up in here and everything. Look at that. That is fantastic. She's nice. Now, keep in mind, as you're looking this over, this piece right here, this was $150. That's it. I didn't break my bank on this. I wanted a strong, really cool, fantastic sorceress. And I got her. I mean, I got her. Like, this right here, this fantastic piece right here, 
It was like 150 something dollars, like 158 or something like that. I believe it was 158. And I think we're talking about after paying for the shipping and handling and just, I mean, you can look at it like that is crazy well done. I've, I've literally paid more and got less out of pieces like this. And I mean that in all honesty. We don't, oh, the nails are painted. Hold on, let me see if I can get her back off of that. And this is probably the last time I'll ever take her off of that because I don't want to risk anything with her. The nails are painted. It's very light. I don't even know if it's really coming up on the camera. I'm trying to show it to you. I really am. But the nails, the fingernails are painted. There's this very, very, very light. It's like a, it's, I can't tell if it's a silverish or a pinkish color. Um, I'll also, I'll also let you know I'm red, green deficient. So when you ask me to call out colors, that can be really tough for me because if that's like a pinkish color and it happens to be on her hand and if it, if it comes in contact with any other color, like there's the brown chair over there from my point of view and then her hand kind of gets, if, if you're not, if you don't have colorblind issues, you don't know what I'm talking about. But yes, it can make it really difficult to guarantee the color that you're looking at from time to time. That bicep is really, really fine. The way it comes down and just this little itty bitty bit of detail right here where the actual sleeve is, that comes down in the hand, every single individual finger, and then that comes down into her back. She's got that, she's got that hard female arch right there on the back that goes down across the thigh and everything comes down. This, this could probably be painted the littlest bit better, but I'm not going to complain. I still think that's absolutely fantastic. It really is. And it's absolutely minor where I see any kind of paint details. This looks like actual material. It's not, but I mean, it, it looks it. It really does. It's detailed very much in a way that makes it look like actual material. Just, she is fantastic. Even this looks like there's an actual difference in material from the way that it's crafted here as opposed to the way that it's crafted here. You can see an actual difference in what this material is in terms of her and crafted around her and everything like that. Whew! Fantastic. Let's put her on here. And that's her. Oh man, this is so cool. Wow. Well, I was looking for a high quality, awesome piece for my Masters of the Universe collection. And for a first step into like super high scale-esque collectible stuff in terms of Masters of the Universe, she's pretty solid. Now, I have had a couple of statues here and there that you could argue are higher quality. I have a Wonder Woman on the shelf right back there, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And I have a, actually have a couple of Wonder Woman, if you want to get technical and you go on to that. But I've had Spider-Gwen and a couple of other statues here and there. I have a pretty cool Donatello, which I actually did a video on and things of that nature. But like... All in all, and the fact that she's Masters of the Universe, she is fantastic. For $158, she is absolutely unbelievable. She sits in a price range that is affordable and still manages a very, very, very high level of detail. Now, I've seen statues that range in the $500 and $600 mark that would put this to shame. I know that. I know that. So if there's the idea of going into the comments and saying something like, oh, well, uh, the $500, uh, He-Man, or the, or the one, there's like, there's like, there's like one that's like $1,300 or more. It's like Battle Cat on, like He-Man's like on Battle Cat. Yes. I get it. Those pieces 
are unbelievable. I think there's a $500 Skeletor in the Bone Throne, which is really, really solid. And I've seen a Skeletor, which is in the $230 range at a comic shop that I almost bought one time. But for my first statue, Masters of the Universe, this was an absolute fantastic beginning. I will get more. I don't know exactly what, but I think there's a new Tila Orko that's coming out, and I think there's a I think there's a Shira that's on the horizon. I don't know if I'll put my money towards that. Um, truth of the matter is, we only have so much money, we can only do so much with it. So I have to guarantee that if I buy a big item, we're talking a big item is anything technically over a hundred dollars that you're spending real money. Uh, personally. Th from my point of view, personally, if you are dipping over $100 into a statue or a toy, this is a big item drop. It's not a small thing. You better make sure that that's something that means something to you and means something to your collection one way or another. Do they exist? Oh yes, a lot of these items exist. We can't get them all, so we gotta be careful about the ones that we get. And I'm very happy with this one because I've already talked about it before. The Sorceress design is fantastic. And in case the scale is a little funny and you're not 100% sure as to like what this scale really is, there's the Sorceress from Origins. Gives you an idea. And a Masterverse character standing next to this is about this big. Uh, she's big. She is big. Is she big? Like, in terms, I'm not going to dig it out right now, but I'm curious if Motherboard stands any taller than she does or if she stands taller than Motherboard does. But that gives you an idea of just how big this is. And I'm happy with it. Absolutely happy with it. Guys, I have been on a lot of overtime. Like, the last two weeks have been pretty brutal. I've been forced... Rather, I've been working overtime, uh, like literally Monday through Friday and Saturdays for like two weeks, and the weather has been ridiculous, so no, I have not been putting out videos at the rate that I wanted to. I want to start going across and getting all the Masterverse and whatnot, and I still want to do those video. excuse me, I still want to do those videos about the uh, uh, collection goals, because I, I really have a couple of things I'd like to talk about. I'd like to do like a... St I, I, I've, I've made up my mind. We're not going to go back over the shelves the way that I did last time. I'm just going to clean up the shelves and do them myself and not turn them into videos. But I would like to do a set of videos talking about different collections and goals I have within those collections, like Star Wars. Yes, I have stepped away pretty hard from Star Wars, but there's still a couple of things that I feel like I want before I say I'm done collecting Star Wars. This is what I have. This is what I've wanted. This is what I've got. I'm happy with that. I'll move on with my life. I always feel, I, uh, I've always felt like there's a couple items that I've missed that I want. And of course, then we'll talk about, I, I also got to think about things like uh, Masterverse, Origins, uh, Motu in general, maybe even some Pokemon goals, a couple of things like that. I want to set collection goals, things that I can actually look for and complete, like uh, Ultimates TMNT. What figures do I honestly want? What stands out? What speaks to me? And that kind of idea. And so, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to get around to those videos, but I am, they're, they're turning in my head is what I'm telling you. I really do have them set. I want to do them. And I want to open up all the figures, all of them. Every figure that I've collected, I want to open so I can get them on the shelf in a more permanent capacity and figure everything out. Anyways, guys, Sorceress opened, added to the shelf, Iron Studios, fantastic work on this piece right here. I'm thoroughly impressed. Good job. Honest to God, good job. I'm going to get out of here. I have spoken. Take what you will from it.